Hello, and welcome to the video series on learning in synchronous online learning environments, such as online meetings and webinars, with a focus on Zoom. If you are a teacher or educator, you may also want to view our seven video series on how to teach in an online synchronous environment here. I'm Heather McNeil, physician and faculty lead educational technologies containing professional development at the University of Toronto. The pandemic has caused a rapid shift to online learning, and we hope that these videos will help with the knowledge, skills, and confidence to learn online, both now and into the future. Although this video series will focus on Zoom, the principles discussed here also apply to other similar synchronous software, such as Adobe Connect, Blackboard Collaborate, GoToMeeting, Microsoft Teams, or Google Meet. Many of you have attended learning in Zoom, and others are just getting started. You've invested your time, focus, and possibly money into your learning experience. So how can you make sure to get the most out of these investments in your learning? Let's discuss three important things to consider. Number one, your audio and video setup. Number two, creating a collegial and interactive learning environment. And number three, netiquette. First, let's begin with the two most essential things for synchronous online learning, your internet connection and audio quality. For optimal internet connection, consider using an Ethernet cable instead of relying on a potentially unstable Wi-Fi connection. If you're working from home, when possible, ensure that no one will be playing video games or streaming movies, which may disrupt your audio or video quality. Audio is also crucial, and you'll need a headset or earbuds with a mic to take out background noises, such as dogs barking, hospital overhead announcements, and typing. Before starting a session, ensure that the correct speakers and microphone are selected here. Hello, hello. If you have another computer screen or computer available, consider using both screens to allow more visual real estate, such as having the chat and web browser open on one screen and the slides and participants open on another. In a traditional classroom, you would have a 360 degree view of the learning experience. Limiting this to one small computer or phone may be visually taxing and limit your learning experience. If you're using two computers rather than one computer and an extra monitor, Make sure that one of your computers is muted in Zoom and volume off. Otherwise, this will create an audio feedback loop like this. Feedback. This may also happen if you're sitting too close to another participant in the same room. If you need to be in the same room, ensure one of you is always muted. Headsets will also help to avoid this feedback if both your microphones need to be on. Next, let's consider your new classroom experience. Online learning affords many benefits over traditional classrooms, such as negating travel time and learning with people from all over the world. However, there are also downsides, such as technical glitches and needing to learn in a new way in this unfamiliar environment. Systematic reviews and meta-analyses have shown online learning can be as effective as traditional face-to-face -face classrooms. So why do we sometimes experience suboptimal learning online? Simply put, learning in a synchronous online environment is different than in a face-to-face -face one, and how you interact with your colleagues, your teaching, and with the learning material should be different too for the best learning experience. Overall, the same principles that are important in a face-to-face -face teaching – interactivity, feedback, repetition, reflection, and social learning – are important in online environments to make learning stick. This video series will focus on the ways you can learn effectively in this new learning environment through tools such as nonverbal communication, chat, polls, annotation, whiteboard, and breakout rooms. Remember, even the most seasoned learner or teacher is going to have technical issues online. But if we are gentle on ourselves, as well as each other in this new learning environment, we can create a supportive classroom to learn new ways from each other. Some things we can't control, and others we can prepare for such as having a backup computer or phone, and preparing for our learning, such as watching these videos. It's important to know the difference and non-judgmentally help out our fellow learners and teachers in learning. Remember, we're all in this together. Lastly, we've all learned socially acceptable or not acceptable ways to learn in a classroom setting from an early age, but online the rules are not so clearly established. Therefore, establishing netiquette, or online learning rules, is essential for learning and communicating together in this new classroom. We'll discuss netiquette in the last video number five. For now, it's typically good practice to start with your video on and your microphone muted. Also, 
Don't forget to make sure you have your name listed the way that you want your teachers and fellow learners to see it. Consider the name your teacher may have on their list, as well as how you want to be addressed, as shown here. For now, take this time to Number 1. Set up your Ethernet connection. You may need to buy an Ethernet adapter, as shown here, if there's no Ethernet port on your computer. Connect your headset and check, record, and play back your audio. Number 2. Download Zoom to your computer at zoom.us. You can also participate in Zoom without downloading the software. However, it may be more glitchy and may not have all the features your teacher may be using. If you already have downloaded Zoom, make sure you have the latest version by clicking here. Versions change frequently, and not having the most recent may limit your functionality. If possible, try to use a computer with two screens to allow more real estate for your learning and for less visually straining experience. Number four, take a deep breath and be open to this new type of learning experience. Know that by following the steps in these videos, you'll be well prepared and that equally, tech glitches and errors are expected in this environment and that's okay. We're all in this to learn together. Number five, be prepared to step up and get involved in the online learning experience. You may need to assist your fellow learners and teachers in how to learn in this new environment but by helping others in this transition, your educational experience will be that much richer too. Now that you're all set up and ready for a new learning experience, let's move on to video number two, how to interact and communicate online using nonverbal communication and chat pod. If you like these videos, please like, subscribe, and share with others. Also, please leave us a comment below and what your experience has been like. Please leave any tips and tricks that you've learned for others.